in today's episode. A look inside and an attempt to repair of an automotive diagnostics probe. Fresh from the dollar dragon, what could possibly go wrong? Hello Finland friends. Do you like hot steaming turds? Oh, I know you do. Look at that. That's a real piece of shit. Cars. The bane of my bloody existence. Especially auto transmissions. This time, my mom's old Renault Megane auto transmission gave up the ghost. And I thought I'd order one of these probes to aid me in uh, troubleshooting yeah. the valve states, the pressure uh, readings and so on. I don't think I need to remove that side, do I? Um, ordered from AliExpress, where else? And it wasn't like cheap, cheap. Okay, it, it is of course cheaper than an official tool, but still over 200 euros. So I was hopeful that it would actually do its job fairly well, and it did. Um, uh, it arrived, I installed the, so <laughs> the software, oh my god. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, it, there's a reason uh, the installation instructions mention that you should turn off your antivirus, because how else, how else would they be able to infect you <laughs> with viruses? Yeah. <laughs> So don't, um, be careful, don't turn off your antivirus and uh, there are, <laughs> well, not legit copies, but uh, uninfected versions available from uh, various um, sources. Um, install the software, fairly easy deal, um, had to fire up a few legacy frameworks to get the um, code hack uh, generator thingy working but yeah once that was done just plug this one in to a USB port and the other end to the OBD2 port on the car and I managed to take a few readings uh, and uh, everything was hunky-dory went up to grab some food left this plugged into the car and the computer, came back a few hours later and it was doing this. <coughs> and a lot of troubleshooting later, um, opening a dispute with the AliExpress seller and so on and so on, I decided, well, I got a partial refund and I crossed my fingers, hoped that I would be able to repair it. So I decided to take a look. The main culprit was this uh, IC down here. Let's see if we can see anything. Get some extra lighting in there. Maybe it's upside down even. All right, so uh, Cyprus uh, ship uh, a USB hub controller because um, this device contains two uh, downstream USB peripherals one for the ISO um, interface and one for the CAN interface and this is a chip that all the shops selling this device uh, are bragging about the so-called Cypress um, 
21 35SC uh, and there are a few variants uh, but given the absence of a logo and that China font not so sure that's a genuine chip um, But anyway, I suspect that they are working fine because they popped up every time that this uh, USB hub controller was detected by Windows. And so I decided to focus my troubleshooting on uh, this one, first of all. And my mom always said, thou shalt measure voltages. So that's what I began doing. And absolutely nothing made sense. For instance, why was uh, that GPIO pin over there grounded and the VCC pin was was not where it was supposed to be and, and, and nothing was where it was supposed to be and I checked the data sheet and I was trying to well, I thought maybe this was a, a newer variant with a different pin out but why and I, I checked the packaging and the data sheet said this was an SOIC part and I said to myself that's not an SOIC part and I, I checked again maybe maybe there was an SSOP 28 uh, variant but no that the code on the chip the SXC on the end there stands for uh, an SOIC package. And that's when it dawned on me that this wasn't a Cypress chip at all. <laughs> this is some other chip that they've gone through the effort of rebranding. And it's not a bad rebranding or relabeling, whatever you should call it. So they, they've ordered another IC with a custom laser engravement of a completely different chip. And uh, I started uh, trying to find what chip this might be and it wasn't that hard. Um, searched for USB hub controllers and uh, SSOP uh, 28, it's a 28 pin chip. So. Uh, if eventually I found this uh, GL Genesis Logic uh, chip GL850 which is a fairly uh, common IC uh, cheap not necessarily bad and uh, yes of course the pinout was a complete match so this is actually a, a Genesis IC here and um, I was lucky I managed to find an eBay seller with uh, 10 of these GL852 uh, chips. It's the same IC, only this one has got a um, multiple transaction translator, whereas this, well, I, I don't know, but I guess it's the 850. Why would they choose a more expensive part? And it's only got a single uh, transaction translator, which is fine because there are only two peripherals and they are um, speaking the same language USB wise so but in theory this um, MTT version uh, should have a better performance and if uh, one of them fails well, I can just chew through them until I find one that doesn't oh I forgot to mention it also came with genuine fake stickers to make it look like the real deal.
Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Haha. <laughs> Das red light, ja? Let's try another port. One that gave me trouble also before. Ah. No worries. It's fixed. Maybe. So here I am in this sad excuse for a car. Probe connected, uh, sticker added, software running, it's very picky, tried it yesterday and I had to <coughs> connect it multiple times before it would accept the probe on the car interface, um, tried it with a shorter USB cable earlier but it just wouldn't work, um, so I <coughs> fetched another one with uh, it was longer and thinner but it's got ferrite beads I don't know if I'm interested in spending any more time on this than necessary finding out what's wrong with the probe used to find out what's wrong with this car oh and just uh, <laughs> for your amusement here's uh, what the car sounds like when I switch to reverse gear Oh. And uh, drive is not as bad. I think it's for the best to end this video now. I don't want it to turn into a car repair thing. And the car is still not operational to this date. But hey, at least Probe is working. So thanks for watching. Bye.